The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the wonderful Wednesday, the April 3rd edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, let's go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, I get that, and I've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject, heading, just make it easier for me. Put radio show question or something like that. That would be great. And, of course, inside the Tiger's Den. Well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of green out there when it comes to the U.S. indices, all trading the upside. Not so inside the S&P sectors out here. But if we take a look at the Dow, up 95 points, a quarter percent, four tenths for the S&P or 21 points, about six tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 102, 11 points for the Russell, 32 for the semis, 165 for the trannies. You've got gold up 21 bucks. Silver's up a dollar. That's a four percent move there. Light three crude is up 56 pennies. Natural gas is flat. 30-year Treasury printed out 117.08. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside are MicroStrategy, an $80 move, 5%. Broadcom, $29, 2%. HubSpot, $21, 4%. Spotify, $17. And Lamb Research is up 17 as well. To the downside, it's that beautiful company, Alta Beauty, down 70 buckaroonies. That is a 13% move. ELF Beauty, not doing much better. 10% move, down $19. Uh, not a good beautification start to their day. Super Micro, down 14 bucks. Restoration Hardware off nine, GCT semiconductor down about seven bucks. How about that earthquake over overseas in Taiwan uh, last night? I didn't get all the pictures out there, uh, but I will uh, probably during the evening I'll try to surf through and see what uh, see what I can see out there. In any event, out here, um, let's be. So why do we have a bounce taking place here? Well, the first reason is we take a look at yesterday's action activity out there. Uh, this is the uh, daily time frame chart. We can see that price inside the S&P 500 ES mini got back, tested, and rejected the top of its profile. When you trade above the top of the profile, basically conditions are bullish. Now there's a road momentum indicator top from two days ago. So the overall signal here is neutral because price hasn't busted any level of support. The NQ, big day to the downside, never actually got down on the black background charts at the top of the profile. On the white background charts, it did. Again, support held out here, but it's still a neutral signal because of that roads went to indicator top at 18709 same pattern set up inside the ym and really the same pattern inside the russell 2000 now the russell 2000 did form that new profile that you and i looked at yesterday so you now have a solid area of support it's a buy zone and that's between 2081 and 2100 so one thing to be watching today would be the russell 2000 equity future contract to see if it can close above that 2100 level the further it can close above that the more of a likelihood that price then gets up to the top of its profile which would be a 2138 out there. So support held across the board. What else transpired yesterday? Great question. Let's go ahead and move our charts over to the white background charts. And what we'll see here is just simply the normal dance steps. You and I, we have a competitive advantage over others because we understand how these markets work. If we take a look at the ES Mini, we open up this set of charts up here. If we take a look at coming back to that major bottom that formed back here in October, 
We take a look at the normal dance steps. What we can see our retracements typically last two to three bars. Two to three bars. That's it. What was yesterday? Bar number two. So, uh, and I'm just showing the bottoms at this stage. I'm not showing both the top and the bottoms here, just so, folks, so we're not really too focused on anything else. Now, what we should also get then is we should get a two day rally. However, until we close above uh, yesterday's high out there, a little bit suspect on that. It could just be a one hit wonder because of those tops. And the NQ only one day moved to the downside. If we take a look at the YM, it was two days to the downside. The Russell, the same thing out there. So just the normal. So what's going on right now is just really normal dance steps. We're still in a bullish mode uh, with tops out there, both on the daily and the weekly time frame. So it does suggest caution out there. If we take a quick peek and go take a look at intraday, what's going on? We'll pull those charts up here momentarily just to get a feel for any types of signals. These are not the charts, by the way. They'll be here momentarily. And we're going to begin with the NQ, I believe, is what's going to pop up on our screen here. Daily time frame, you and I have already covered that. If we take a look at the – so where do we have the bottom pattern out here? Well, turns out you had a bottom pattern in the five-hour time frame chart. It was a buy the D point pattern that formed out here uh, and that uh, completed at five o'clock last evening now what we have is we have price trading above the top of its profile now, this candle session doesn't complete till 2 p.m but if price is trading of 18404 as it is right now it suggests that price get all the way back to that 18607 level i would also throw out there that 18567 is another key area of resistance so this shows 18607 i'd say watch 18567 if price gets up there that could be where you would then see the NQ turned down on a four hour time frame chart. We don't have a bottom signal here. We didn't get a bullish reversal candidate to confirm its pattern. But what we can say is that price has been trading below its bullish structured profile for the four hour time frame chart. And it did it for more than two bars out there. What's that tell us? That says if this is just a counter trend move right here, right now is where price stops. Why? Because it's the center of that bullish structured profile. The read on that, the exact number is 18,443. We're traded 18,443. So watch that level. Price is able to get above that. That tells us, at least for the four-hour time frame, that this is more than a counter-trend move and that price could be making its way to 18.523, 18.604. Again, watch the 18.567 on a rally. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, same kind of a pattern by the D point. Price is trading well above the top of its profile. It's suggesting 18.511. So now I say watch 18.511 to 18.567 on this rally. I could keep going on here. What we don't have, other than the 10-minute time frame chart, is a topping signal. We are in bar number nine. That's going to complete at 11.20. The pattern will complete at 11.30. So hopefully we'll be able to look at this between 11.30 and at 12 noon out there, the 10 minute chart is suggests we could see some type of short term pullback. Now, the cool thing about that is that 1130 will have a completed TD nine count top at 1140, 1150. Those other 10 minute bars the question is, is price taking those levels out? If it does for the 10 minute time frame tells you about a very strong upward momentum move out there. So that's what taking place. We take a look at the NQ. We take a look at the general markets out there. I would say the uh, NQ and the Russell were the weakest uh, yesterday out here. But let's just leave this and let's try to get into some of our other questions that came in. Uh, I'll switch back to the black background charts here. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go to a break. When we come back from this break, we're going to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the Advanced Client Oscillator for Peter in Park City. Then we're going to take a good palantir for Greg M. He wants to add to a long position. We're going to look at gold, silver, copper, and oil for Z inside the Tiger Center and a Nike for Dan, and he sees a nice bounce of coming. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the chart we have up on our screen right now is a New York Stock Exchange. That's at the top panel. Down below that is the actual advanced decline line. Below that is the advanced decline oscillator. The advanced decline oscillator is nothing more than the, uh, 19, the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, you'll see a red horizontal line there. That's the zero threshold level. When, in essence, just generally speaking, when price is above that zero threshold level, conditions are basically in favor of buying buyers out there. Again, I'm just generally speaking, it's a little bit more of a nuance than just that. But we want to start there. When price is below that zero threshold level, then it indicates that sellers are the ones that are in control. Now, you got to be above and below for at least two days. Look, we have been oscillating, Peter. We have been oscillating back and forth above this line for the last couple of weeks out there. And in my opinion, it is not providing you and I with a clear enough signal out there. Price is below the zero threshold level. This might be day number two. I will still say that, okay, that does give sellers a bit of an advantage. It's a, it's especially a big advantage when you have the spot volatility above the 50-day exponential moving average, which it is right now. The 50-day exponential moving average, well, we'll move over. So um, now the advanced decline line, Peter, this is kind of interesting. I hadn't really taken notice. We've gotten basically back to the highs that were out here back in uh, 2021 out there. So even though we are above the uh, 2021 highs, the advanced uh, market breadth is uh, is really uh, pretty good when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange and that advanced line oscillator. So I don't think it provides us with a really clear signal out there, um, but there's the information I've got on it. So I hope that helps you out. And as always, Peter, thanks so much for your request. Let's go to our first caller. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. WBA, is that Walgreens Boots? Is that what you're taking a look at? That's right. And I have no position. I just have been watching it here and there, and I saw that yesterday it got down to a low. I went way back on the charts, and I think it was back to like 97 or something where it had been that low. So I just wanted to get your thoughts. The only thing I noticed at oh. all was on the weekly, which of course hasn't finished yet. It looked like it had a or on my bottom on it but just if you could take a look and see what you happen to 
notice and anything that you might pick up or think that you know would indicate there's any kind of a bottom potentially you know in the process yeah. of being made yeah what's what's going on with walgreens you know what, what's i mean this is <laughs> hurting i can see that sure yeah why, but... yeah it got from uh <laughs> gone from 100 100 plus dollars in 2015 all the way down to 18 bucks and and you're right it's trading below a lot of lows out here i mean when it comes to swing point lows um, yeah, yeah, it's trading into the 1998 time frame, 1997 time frame, but it's a real struggle to find a decent swing point there. So, I mean, you really don't get it till 1994 and about $3 and change a uh, level out there. So let me switch over to the white background charts and uh, see if we can pick up on any patterns here. So in a moment, we'll be over there, Brent, to see if there's anything, any signals, daily, weekly, or monthly. So let's start with the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame shows that a close below the November 2023 low out there, and that is at uh, $19.68, it's only April 3rd, but a close below that would negate a TD9 count bottom. It still would leave a Rhodesman to indicator signal trigger, but that would require a bullish reversal candle. Prices below profile support at this stage, so I would say a close below that November 2023 low is pretty bearish. Right now on a weekly time frame, price is taking out a TD9 count bottom. This formed the week of March the 8th. So a close below that at week's end, it being 2042, suggests lower price. We're trading below a hammer candle to Roach Mentum Indicator bottom as well. That was from the week of December 1st. It says a close below 1968 at the end of the week is a bearish signal. It says that we had a lower. Uh, I don't have any other bottoming pattern. It still has triggered a Roach Mentum Indicator signal, but that requires a whole new refresh, and that means a new bullish reversal candle finally when we take a look at the daily time frame brent i've got nothing out here now maybe there's an a to b equals cd pattern that we can draw in let's take a look at that here just the most recent uh i'm sure a to b equals cd pattern and there's our a to b and i'll just simply move this over to the c point so the c point says that that price projection is right about the 1825 ish area out there so you could be looking for some type of uh, bullish reversal candle around there that might just give us a short-term rally. Don't know if it would really be anything significant, especially because of the way that it looks like the weekly is going to negate its bottom signals and the monthly looks like it may do that too. It's too, too early to tell on the, uh, on the monthly time frame. Is there any area that you're eyeing um, on this that, that we should take a look at and see if there's anything going on there? I didn't do a ton of work on it, Steve, and honestly, I'm just on a walk right now. I don't have my computer in front of me, but it's. Uh, I just noticed that it was, you know, like you kind of pointed out, it's, it's definitely down near some lower levels that it hasn't been. It's. I mean, at this point, it's pretty ugly looking. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. <laughs> it really just, is. Know, it sounds like, yeah, just sort of keep watching it. It's, there's something going on there that must not be very good. It's, it's definitely yeah. struggling, and um, I haven't really checked CVS and some of the other, you know, and competitive companies in that area, but if their charts are anything like that, I just yeah, I think I'm gonna do some more research and just keep an eye on it. And, and I know they had their earnings not like I think it was last week towards the end of last week, maybe Friday. It wouldn't have been Friday Thursday, I guess. And yeah, so so odd it was, though. It uh, was yeah, it had that little pop up to like twenty something, but then it just gave that all up, and now it's lower. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, really, it's hard to draw. I, I mean, I don't, you know, I I don't. It's hard to draw a conclusion here. Why did this thing take out in 2015? And it's basically been moving lower ever since. I mean, even even during the COVID uh, time period, you know, it had a little bit of a rally. But um, wow, it's a it doesn't look good. Yeah, it doesn't look good for Walgreens boots. Uh, were they kicked out of the Dow? Do uh, it's we, possible. I don't really follow it that much. I just yeah, yeah it's one of those that. Yeah. Anyway, no, I really appreciate it, Steve. I'll keep sure. an eye on it. It's one of those that maybe you're better off just avoiding. You know, it's uh, the, sometimes they at, just don't work out. Yeah, at this stage. Hey, keep your keep your eye on the road in front of you as you walk. And as always, thanks so much for calling. And always great to hear from you. That is Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, let's move on and take a look at Palantir. This is for Greg M. Greg wrote in. Um, might have been early this morning, late yesterday. I think it was late yesterday afternoon or evening. And uh, would like to add to his position in Palantir. He realizes there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. And there's, I don't think it was confirmed by volume. What I mean by, let's check on that. 
uh, that's my recollection. The swing point of that A to B equals CD was from the day of March 19th. 43 million shares. Now, as price passed through there, it was with 41 million shares, so a little bit lighter. Yesterday was with 39 million shares. Nonetheless, you still have an A to B equals CD pattern with price below a brand new profile that is forming today. So that's kind of a, it's not kind of, it is a bearish message out there. So the one to one price projection will be 2090. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, what we have out here, Greg, is a weekly roads momentum indicator top with price below its oscillator and change line. So we know it has lost its momentum. It just suggests a further retracement. Now, its area of support is between $17 and $17.96 out there. If we're wondering why did price stop where it did, all we have to do is take a look at the uh, week, uh, the monthly time frame chart. It had a great rally up until last month where it ran right into its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, which is a beautiful thing out there. And folks, you really should do, you should understand this pattern. It's pretty easy to do. It's easy to notate on your daily, your weekly charts. You don't need the automated tool like I have out there, but boy, it helps you understand support and resistance real well. When we come back from this break, we'll answer Greg's question. Where is it likely to add to a long-term position? We'll be right back. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50% and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day, before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, up, folks. So uh, we take a look at Palantirs. The difficulty here in, in trying to answer Greg's question is that uh, and one, of the, one of the things he's wondering, I believe it was, is will price get back to this gap? Now, this thing gapped up big time on February 6th. When I say big time, volume of 421 million shares. Now, it's not a swing point. But it certainly is a breakout area. And as an example, yesterday, price pulled back into that with 39 million shares, <clears throat> rejected that uh, candle, closed above it. Um, today, uh, we, we never got back down to touch that level. We are trading above yesterday's high. As I mentioned, there's a new profile that formed. 2360 is the bottom of that profile. So that would be a resistance area. Can I see price rallying up to that 2360 level? Absolutely. Why is that, Stevo? Well, if we take a look at Palantir out here, it would just be normal to at least get a two-day rally. Yesterday was not a one. Was, yesterday was not the first day of that rally. It closed lower out there, so we're trading above yesterday's high. As long as we stay above yesterday's high, this will end up being in. A, it's it really yesterday's close, but I'd prefer to stay above yesterday's high. This would be day number one. So you could at least see a two-bar rally out here inside of Palantir, and then I would say that price projection would be right up into that resistance area out there, and that would be at the 236 level. What happens if price gets that 230 or 2360 area out there? Well, it'll be back above that uh, swing point uh, that we use for the A to B equals CD to the downside. So this one gets a bit tricky out here, in my opinion. Are we likely to get that rally? Good question out here. All we have to do is look at a 30-minute time frame chart and see what signals we have. We have a TD nine count bottom pattern, a top pattern that formed at a four o'clock yesterday afternoon. Price closed above it as we came into the uh, nine, uh, 1030 uh, bar out there. So that pattern's been negated. We're trading above profiles. This is suggesting that Palantir should rally further. Now, 24, 28 would be its target to the upside. But on that daily time frame, we've got, what was the number? 2360. So I'm going to go with, this is a hard call out there. You're already in a long position. So maybe what you want to do here is be conservative. So let's see if this A to B equals CD pattern uh, comes to fruition down in that 2090 area. So I hope that helps you out. Greg, and I hope you also understand kind of the predicament with regard to, well, where is a good place? We don't have a bottom, but we're below a swing point on a little bit of a later volume out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, John, inside the Tigers, I wanted to take a look at four instruments. So let's go begin that journey. The first one was to take a look, well, not necessarily in this order, but we're going to take it in this order. And the first one was to take a look at Goldilocks. And the question is, for each of these instruments, are we nearing a time period where the rally may complete? So we take a look at Goldilocks. Uh, get those charts up here. What do we see? Well, here's what we know. I don't have it written in on my uh, system, but on the daily time frame, first on the daily time frame, John, we do not see any kind of a topping signal. We have a Rhodes McDim indicator pattern that is triggered. We are in bar number seven. Your question about are we near a potential topping point? Well, a TD9 count could do that, would do that. The last top that we had out here was a TD9 count that formed on bar number nine. This says that you could get a topping pattern that forms between Thursday and Monday of next week on a daily time frame. And that would be, the pattern hasn't you know formed just yet. We need to at least get to bar number eight um, uh, with that being a high out there. Uh, and then the answer to that question on a daily signal would be yes. On the weekly time frame, the answer is no. We're only in bar number seven as we speak right now. There's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That A to B equals CD pound on the upside has an initial price projection of 23.27. So we're not really that far away from it. It could do that in a heartbeat. It could do that in a moment out there. Um, uh, so, but and gold usually does more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. But 23.27 is the initial price target area, and a bearish reversal candle on a daily time frame would generate a topping signal. So we would want to be on the watch for that because you could get a TD9 count, a sell the D point, and a Rosemont to indicator top all forming at the same time probably early next week as a potential. Um, the monthly chart looks uh, bullish as well out here. We're trading above last month's high. No topping signal uh, there on an intraday basis. Uh, John, on the four-hour time frame chart and the five-hour, I have Rosemont to indicator tops. But those tops would be negated, and I'd pay attention to the one from the five-hour time frame chart. And that would get negated with a close above 230880. Now we are trading above the top of its profile at 230380. I expect I would anticipate that this top 
will end up failing and we see gold rally further. But to answer your question, do we see a potential top? Yeah, it's it would likely come between tomorrow and uh, Monday out there if, in fact, it does form. Your next request was to take a look at, well, let's go back. Let's take a look at light speed crude. In the case of light speed crude, it's in an A to B equals CD pattern of the upside for its daily time frame. Not drawn in here, but we see that when we do the 11 a.m. update out there. Its next price projection is already above the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern. There was a sell the D point pattern that also formed out here in the trading day of March 20th. That was negated back here on uh, April the 2nd. That was yesterday. Um, uh, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Sorry about that. April 1st is, uh, I was fooling you, is when it negated that uh, signal out there. So the 1.618 1 1 price projection level, 87.62. We look at a weekly time frame, no topping signal at all. Uh, you're in bar number six. Uh, it suggests it wants to move higher. I can't rely on the, uh, well, I can rely on the monthly time frame because I do have May out there. So this, so no topping pattern. Um, there is a TD9 count that it's dealing with. So an all-out breakout inside of uh, Light Sweet Crude would be or it re would require a close above 88.31. We get above 88.31, well, then we're back to that $6 plus uh, gallon price out there. It's, it, you know, it's insane what they charge for gas here in South Florida. Um, and we were back up to 560 a gallon for a premium. We were almost a dollar less than that in uh, Naples. Always fill up in uh, Naples for sure. So with regard to uh, light speed crude, uh, John, it looks like it wants to add higher. We've got some intraday topping signals out here. I see one on the five-hour time frame chart. So with this, I'd say pay attention to that one. That says if we get a close above uh, 86.10 on a five-hour time frame chart, this tells us that it wants to add higher. You also want to take a look at high-grade copper. We take a look at high-grade copper out here. What we've got is, uh, wow, we've got price taking out the top of its daily profile, $4.16 on a daily time frame. That sets up a new A to B equals CD pattern. So holy shnikes out there. Uh, on a monthly time frame, I do not see a topping pattern. On a weekly time frame, uh, we are in bar number eight. So there's a potential, John, for a top in high-grade copper to form between this week and the next two. But when we look at the daily time frame, it says it ain't going to be this week because we're taking out a B point and it's going to set up a very large A to B equals CD to the upside. Your last request was to take a look at, what was it, uh... Gold, silver, oil, uh, copper, silver. Let's get over to silver real quickly here before we get to this break. And high ho silver, what do we have here? We've got silver in an A to B equals CD pad on the upside. No other topping signal on the daily time frame. 28.23 is its initial price projection level. On a weekly basis, you're in bar number eight for silver. You're trading above a new profile that formed last week out there. This is in bullish mode. This says you could see a top between this week and the next two. I don't think on the daily time frame it says it's this week at all. So to answer your question, I hope that answered your question with regard to are there potential tops forming or not? I think gold was the only one that really had one that we want to keep an eye on as we start to approach the end of the week. Folks, uh, we'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. Let's get to our next request. It's from Dan inside the Tiger Den. He'd like to take a look at Nike out here. So, Dan, when I take a look at the daily time frame, what I'm missing is any kind of a uh, bottoming pattern. Now, and when I and when I look at it, the only bottoming pattern could be that price is getting back towards this swing point. So this uh, Nike had gapped up back on September 29th with 34 million shares. So it backed off yesterday, traded below support profile in the South Southern change line with 11 million shares. It's pulling into a swing point that was a TD9 count bottom back in the trading session of September 28th. The high there, 89.78, 16 million shares. So far today in Nike, in two hours of trading, uh, i got to pull this over, sorry about that. Come on. Uh, it's done about 3 million shares. So we're at about a, um, let's say a 10 to 12 million share a day. And that swing point has volume of 16 million shares. Now, it has not gotten down to the high. I would say if you're looking for some type of bounce at this stage here, you want to see a test and rejection of 89.78 on less than 16 million shares. So far, today's low is uh, 90.28 out there. So if you get that test and rejection of a swing point, you could easily bounce up into the 92.74 level. That would be the uh, bottom of its uh, daily profile. When we take a look at a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows us trading into the same swing point. That swing point on a weekly basis at 75 million shares. We closed inside there with 80 million shares. We did that two weeks ago. Last week, it was a little bit lighter. It was 47 million shares, but we're still inside that swing point. Now, what that suggests, Dan, is that price will get down and test that swing low. And that's down at 88.66. We were really taking a look at the daily swing high out there. But that would be, I'd say, the range between that, that swing point out there. On a monthly basis, it's suggesting that price may want to get back to its breakout level. And that would be about 84.11. Now, if I look to an intraday chart to see if there's something going on intraday to pay attention to, there's a Roachman to indicate signal that was confirmed here at 11 a.m. Price is dealing with a bunch of resistance, profile resistance. Next one is up at the 91.21 level. 
Above that, you'd be looking at 91.90. So I think it looks more like Nike is headed lower before it heads higher with any kind of considerable uh, uh, bounce or rally out there. But that's what I see when I take a look at the chart. So I hope that that helped you out with regard to Nike. Do I see it getting into the $97 level? Well, you've got a battle certainly at 92.74 and then one at 93.32. So you know where your battles are at. I don't know if it can take those battles out or not. I don't think it's prepared to even make that attempt just yet let's go take a look at uh, the uh, japanese yen this is for ckp inside the tiger's den let's get a feel for what it is communicating to us so give me a moment we'll get back to its set of charts out here and here we've got monthly, weekly, daily, and other intraday time periods. So we take a look at the daily time frame. Probably the uh, chart that you should pay most attention to, CKP. I'll just simply expand it out. The reason is not because of the 150.88 level where it was a negation of a TD9 count, but there's a new TD9 count pattern out here. And so that level to be watching, give me a moment here to get rid of that, is going to be the high from the bar following bar number nine. That was from the high of March 27th. That high out there is at 151.97. If price closes above that, it negates that signal and tells us that the yen wants to continue to weaken against the U.S. dollar index. Since that TD9 count pattern has formed, which was about six days ago, price has continued to find support of that green oscillator and change line. What that means, CKP, is that the overall signal is neutral right now. It's got a topping pattern, but it ain't bearish because price has held this green oscillator and change line. Tells you and I we have a rising price oscillator above zero and those just simply are bullish conditions out there. That's the daily time frame message. Let's take a look at the weekly and the monthly. The weekly time frame message um, says that all price needs to do to get to a full breakout mode out here is close above the high from October 21st back in 2022. And that requires a close above 159.94. If we do that, the yen is going to weaken even further out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the yen. It's really going to be about the oscillator and change line on the daily at around 152.50, let's call it, and that TD9 count top. So CKP, I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for the request. Let's go out to Oregon and speak with uh, Rich. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Good, Steve. I appreciate the uh, time. Sure, no uh, problem. My question is about ACMR. Okay. What do you see in your chart for, like, daily action weekly? And in that, do you see any possibility of a breakout? Uh, are you uh, so? Are you are you in the position as we speak right now? Or are you looking to get in? I'm in. I was going to add to it, but I kind of held off. Okay. Uh, do you have a target? Do you have an area where you were looking to potentially add? Uh, well, I was looking at the twenty-eight, the twenty-eight fifty area. Okay. All right. Excellent. So thanks, thanks for helping here. Here's what we know about ACMR, which is ACM Research, and that is that it most recently formed a TD9 count bottom. It accomplished that task on March the 15th out there. That TD9 count bottom was tested way back here on March the 19th. Probably looked like it was getting ready to crater at some point in time there as price was pulling back and testing a breakout level that was a swing point where it's got that gap from February 28th. Now, there was 12 million shares that traded that day when that area was tested. It was with 3 million shares, quite a bit lighter volume, and it also had that profile support at 25.72. So that TD9 count bottom held. What then resulted is price rallied right up into the TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 32.18. It accomplished that task on March 25th. What I would share with you now is that we have a consolidation between 32.18 and 25.72. And it looks to me like price is trying to get back up to that 32.18 level. I have no idea if it will take that out. It was resistance before. It may be resistance again. But if you were to get a pullback into the 25.71 area, that's where I would be looking to add to that position as we speak right now. That's off the daily time frame. And there are two daily resistance points for you to watch. 32.18, which we know is already held as resistance. And above that is the profile. And it's trading into the sell zone. 
sell zone because the center is closer in proximity to the top of the profile than to the bottom. That tells us we have more sellers in the range of 3006 to 3295. If price can clear 3295, it's back off to the races out there. Now the races would likely then run into its next battle at $37.29. That is the monthly TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So it's in a consolidation pattern. If you're looking to add that position on a uh, pullback, you'd love to see it get back down to 25.71. That may not happen. I don't know if that was an earnings release on March 19th or what transpired on that day where price tested that uh, little breakout, big breakout, quite frankly, from February 28th out there. But you're still in that consolidation pattern. Does that answer your question or is there something else I should look at on the charts? The weekly chart, by the way, looks uh, looks really good. Um, so that looks bullish as can be. And the monthly chart is really the same. It's just got that battle at 37.29. Does that provide you with the information you were looking for? Yes. Um, I, that's what I was feeling, that it was just consolidating in here. Uh, yes. And it seemed to have gotten down to the 28 range and then kind of rebounded again. But yes. I didn't know whether it was getting ready to, like you said, go back down into the 25 or break above the the 33. Yeah, and we don't have any signal to suggest it's headed back there, but that is the consolidation zone, and you prefer to buy at the bottom if you can. You're welcome to hold on. We're going to a break here, but if not, thanks so much for calling, Rich, and we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back, folks. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, folks. Let me try to get through these requests. There's some of them that came in. One was for XPEV. It's going to go ahead and uh, form a, a TD9 count uh, pattern uh, today. Uh, we should see price rally into about the $8 level. $8.52 would, uh, would be a beautiful thing. That is, uh, your 8 and 8.52 are your two resistance levels on a rally. you got a 30-minute road momentum indicator bottom as well that I see on another screen. Next request was to take a look at CLSK. This is for Marty. Marty, you've got price at uh, close below uh, the bottom of its bullish structured profile yesterday you got two days below that that suggests lower price lower price where the first place i'd be looking is 1502 the second place would be 1333 those are from the weekly time frame profile levels out there so eclsk looks like it wants to continue to head lower uh nicholas wanted me to comment on the volume inside of the spy out there and the fact that it is moving higher with lighter volume although the day uh is not out um here's what i can just simply share with you with regard to the uh, spy I, I really you know the volume yesterday as an example on its gap to the downside was 74 million shares uh the day when it was moving higher was was 70 million shares that was on march the 20th that's kind of what it was going against i don't really consider that to be too much volume on the way down and you know in today's volume so far has been 17 million shares out there price is above the top of its profile it's got a top that's out here but um, looks like it wants to rally a two-day rally would be a likely out there um what else was asked uh was about the Qs as well, really the same thing out there. Uh, so let's take a look at AAP. That was a request that just came in. Let's see what its charts are communicating to us out here. We take a look at AAP. Um, come on, populate, populate. I, I wish I I wish I could just switch over to a different set of uh, screens out there. I would do that in a heartbeat. We take a look at the ES Mini and see where we're at there. Um, so with regard to AAP, we've got a TD9 count top. Price lost its momentum. It's below its green oscillator and change line. I would say S&P that 8211 would be its next downside target. Uh, that would be its uh, the top of its uh, daily profile out there. Hey, folks, thanks so much for all the requests. That's so helpful to get that. I'll look forward to that same thing tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. But before then, please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care now.